two new maps have been officially added to CSGO. Workout is a hostage map and will be immediately playable in competitive matchmaking. If it looks familiar, it was first added in late 2014 as part of Operation Vanguard and remained in the game for a couple of years. Ruby is a diffuse map, but unlike Workout, is only available for playing casual game modes for now. The map hasn't been in the game before, so I'm guessing casual mode is being used to test it and to make updates if needed. If Ruby looks familiar, its thumbnail is strangely similar to Catfood's older map, Tulip. You may also know some of his other maps, like Log and Shipped, which have also been in the game before. But while these maps have been added, others have been removed. Goodbye to Abbey, which was in the game for three months, and Biome, which lasted for six. These both received significant updates and changes while they were part of CSGO. One of the perks of having your map featured in the game is that you get a lot of information from the matches played on it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Workout and Ruby in their current states, but I'm interested to see how they change in the coming months, particularly with Workout, as from the patch notes, I don't believe it's been changed since it was first added to the game in 2014. Bots have received some love in this update. I don't know the specifics of what has changed, but Valve claims to have improved their navigation around ladders and they'll now choose to plant in more spots within the bomb sites than before. Individual maps have also been updated to make bots less stupid in wingman mode. Although in this mode the unused site is blocked off, bots didn't know this and they may have tried to run to a site they weren't able to reach. The official maps have gotten bot navigation blockers to stop them from doing this. They will now only try to reach the site that wingman is for, which will probably get them killed before you have time to take control of them. Yay. Unsurprisingly, Vertigo has received yet more updates. I always like to run about a map to see if I can spot what's changed and the most noticeable update has been to T-Spawn which has kind of been flipped. Terrorists will now spawn in a new corner that previously didn't exist. This part of the map has been updated numerous times, so I got the feeling that Valve weren't happy with it. This change makes it look cleaner by grouping all of the cover together in the centre. It's brighter, and the new spawn positions may affect how long it takes for them to reach both sites. The bomb sites have also changed. Bomb site B has been made smaller, and terrorists now have to run further to reach it. They've changed the site's appearance a bit by doing away with the 2D and 3D rebar, and the position of the stacks of cover have been shifted. You can see that Bombsite A has had similar treatment. The site's position has been rotated 90 degrees, with both stacks of cover now being the same height. The concrete boost that you can get to has been made smaller in order to accommodate for the new corner of the site, and the passage to elevator room has been extended slightly. Also in elevator room, the cover in the centre has gone. You have a clear view from A side right through to CT spawn now. The job site table can now annoyingly trap you in the corner if you try moving past it. Vertigo must be the first map in existence where you've been able to kill people at both bomb sites while you're still in terrorist spawn. A while ago they added a blue bucket thing to block line of sight to B, and now another has been added, since apparently it was also happening at A. At the beginning of the year you wouldn't have taken me seriously if I said that Vertigo was competitively viable but this update brings yet more features geared towards high level play. Background sounds have been made even quieter. These paint splodges on the wall behind the scaffolding at the back of A will help you to line up grenade throws, and spray paint has been added to these beams at B for, I assume, the same reasons. You could land a molotov on these pipes on the slip to A. This would kill people stood above. This has now been patched up. The sandbags in middle have changed, lowering half of one of the sandbag stacks to be the same height as the metal box in front of it. Upper T Corridor has really been tidied up. I do like this drop down into Bridge Room. It looks like you'll take damage from it, but if you land on the slope then you can do it without taking any damage at all. Adds a bit of skill to it. Movement at the top of stairs to B has been made easier in two ways. First by removing the big metal beam, and second by extending the catwalk out further. It was already made longer in an earlier update, but now you'll have to try really hard to fall to your doom in this area. There were a few sneaky sightlines from CT spawn across to B that have been patched up. First was this one, which has been hidden by a new elevator model. And second was this one, by standing on somebody's head while they were stood on the red fence thing. Insulation now obstructs this view. And last, these panels have been added to reduce how much you can wallbang through the orange tarpaulin at CT spawn. While they were updating the bot's navigation on the other maps, they also took the time to fix some other things as well. On overpass, the balloons are no longer solid, they'll no longer block your movement or grenades, and you won't be able to stand on top of them anymore either. They still don't behave like balloons should, though. And they blocked this hole up, which you used to be able to get C4 stuck in. Train has been given a brighter, more gravelly looking ground texture. I'm all for this, because the brighter the texture is, the more light it reflects onto everything else, so it should make parts of this map feel more cheery than before. 
Also, the trains have been given larger clipping brushes, and have had their models changed ever so slightly. Both of these things make them appear more boxy, having fewer things sticking out from their basic shape. The game is going full circle, returning to the boxy models we saw back in CS 1.6. And A main has changed from this, to this. So when they say a white background has been added, I guess they're referring to this random sheet of metal just here. It makes no sense, but I guess we'll make player models stand out more clearly. Inferno's an interesting one. The top of Banana has been brightened, not too interested in that, but they also fixed a bug with the fountain, sometimes not rendering the water, making it easy to see through from angles such as this one. Thanks, Teddy. I was aware of this bug, and even saw it on a Twitch stream once, but I was never able to identify what caused it to happen, so I'm still not sure if it's something that could be triggered using configs to deliberately get an advantage, but at least now I don't have to worry about it since it's been fixed. As well as this, older and less popular maps have had their radars updated to the new style, which was introduced last year along with the new Panorama UI. The new style is colour coded to show the heights of different areas, and it's good to see the whole game brought up to the same standard and style. That's it for this update, though there was another one earlier this week, which enables D3D9EX by default. This is something we had all expected for a while, but if you're encountering problems with it then email them here to let them know. And you can no longer buy extra grenades if you still had some left over from the round before. That's pretty much it for that update. You can probably see why I didn't bother making a video about it at the time. And lastly, for years the workshop has been spammed by submissions promising free skins and delivering free viruses. These would be upvoted by bot armies, which would downvote any actual content. So if you browse the maps for CSGO, you normally only saw these spam submissions. Valve would occasionally get around to deleting them, only for them to be reposted moments later. This was a major problem that I even made a video about several years ago. Unfortunately, nothing was done about it and the workshop continued to be spammed, and I've been regularly spammed by people thinking I somehow have the power to stop it from happening. I don't. In fact, by talking about it, I'm only giving the spammers more publicity. The sad thing about spam is that it exists because it works, so enough of you must have been tempted by the promise of free skins to make the spam worthwhile. The only things that can be done about it is either for you to stop clicking on the spam, or for Valve to stop it somehow. And that's what they did earlier this month. They have updated the workshops that you have to confirm a submission via email before it's posted. This won't help if the spammer also has control of the email account, but I'm assuming that Valve has taken this approach because the majority of the spam was done from compromised Steam accounts, where the official owner is unaware of the submissions under their name. So having to confirm it via email should help in two ways, firstly by preventing it from being posted in the first place, and second by notifying the owner of the account that they've been compromised by a scam of some kind. This update could have happened a hell of a lot sooner. This spam has been around for far too long. I made a video on it almost three years ago. I've lost count of the number of times I've been told to do something about it. I've had innocent mappers come to me upset that their submissions have been downvoted by bot armies, and I'm annoyed that the workshop has allowed for these scams to exist for so long, and at such a cost to the community. I can only hope the problem will now go away, and that fans of the game can have their submissions get the publicity that they deserve. That's it for now and thank you to Valve for waiting until I was back from holiday before releasing updates for CSGO.